Okay. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and very welcome guests. My name is Colette Ainscough and I'm standing in for the distinguished Toastmaster and Club President Nicola Cani this evening as your presiding officer. I would like you to welcome you to this meeting of the 26th of July 2021 at 18.32. We are going to have a fantastic meeting. Guests, to become a member of Digital Communicators, it is an advanced online club. And it is, it is important that you have been a former member of Toastmasters, have reached level one and two of Pathways or completed the Competent Communication Former Manual. Please rename yourself with the name of the role you're carrying out if you have a role at tonight's meeting. We have people here from around the world, so I would urge you to be careful about your language usage in case of causing some discomfort due to cultural differences. Finally, remember to mute and unmute yourself when speaking. This meeting is being recorded. Extracts from the audio or video may be used for club marketing purposes. Now, it gives me great pleasure, without further ado, to introduce our Toastmaster of the day, the modern, the magnanimous, the marvellous Mark Hanno. Thank you very much, presiding officer, Toastmaster Colette, fellow Toastmasters and most distinguished guests from all over the world. Welcome once again to Digital Communicators, Monday's meeting. And hopefully today we're going to have a transformative meeting indeed. As you know, or you may know, apart from becoming better public speakers and leaders, in this club, we also aim to upgrade our digital skills. Not only to survive, but to thrive online an individual world. For that purpose, we cannot forget that at the end of the day, in essence, we are all human beings, aren't we? And we need to take care of each other. This is why today's topic revolves around this theme, digital well-being. Definitely, it is key to find a balance in which our relationship with digital technology is not other than a healthy one. Because we care about our members and about our audience, we're going to be mindful during the whole meeting. And now, let me introduce members in service today, taking different roles to make this meeting possible and successful. Let's get started then. Our session will be accurately timed by Toastmaster Heidi DeWolf. She uses digital technology mostly in support of her goals and in service of important personal and professional relationships rather than use it to distract herself from these. So help me welcome her to the virtual stage, Heidi DeWolf. Thank you so much, Madam Toastmaster, for the wonderful introduction. Today, I am your timer. Now, in the words of our president, this session is run like a TV show. And like a TV show, we have to stick to time in order to finish on time. And as Toastmasters, it is absolutely imperative that we make sure that we don't steal time from other people in this very meeting. 
So as your timer, I will help you to keep yourself on time. How will I do that? Well, as you can see from the agenda, there are some colors on the agenda that I will be looking at for you. When your time comes to green, I will show a green background. That means you have come to the earliest point in which to finish your speech. The yellow means that you're midway through and the red means that you should be finishing at that point. However, you have 30 further seconds to round up your speech. And at that point, I have the power to mute you. And trust me, I will, because it is important that you don't steal time from other people. Madam Toastmaster, back over to you. Thank you very much. We're going to be mindful that that time is precisely and accurately timed and counted. Now let's continue with our next important role. Our meeting will be linguistically checked with accuracy by our, our grammarian, DTM, Antonia Harrison. Just, she just enjoyed a complete digital deep talks for a week by walking 93 kilometers in six days. Yeah, you heard that correctly, 93 kilometers. And she was in a remote countryside, similar kind of pilgrimage connected to the Camino de Santiago. You may be familiar with that way, the Santiago's way, yeah? And she had no TV, no email, no WhatsApp, no Facebook. She only used her phone for the camera to capture memorable and precise memories. So she used her clock and mapping, that's it. What a wise way to use tech. And after that detox, she is back here and we'll have the honor to welcome her in our digital and virtual stage today. So help me welcome Antonia Harrison, please. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. The word of today has already been chosen by somebody who was going to be the grammarian, and that is transformative. Transformative is causing a marked change in someone or something, usually an important and lasting change. For example, voting is a culturally and socially transformative action. It's difficult to put into words how transformative and enriching it is to study abroad, something Brits used to be able to do before Brexit. Don't get me started. So that's the word of the day. I will be looking out for that, making a note of people who use it, and also listening for good language, wonderful language even, and perhaps some filler words. There might be one or two, and I will report back at the end of the meeting. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Antonia. We'll try to be mindful also about that language that we are gonna be using during the meeting, and hopefully will be a transformative meeting for everyone. Now, let's continue. Who will come next? Who will come next? That's interesting. We, as I said before, we'll make sure we run our, our show in time, yeah? But for that, so, oops, sorry. We need to introduce a very authentic and particular role of this lab. Our VPR, Pamela Benjamin, will be in charge as a live reporter of the meeting. So let me welcome her with a big round of applause, please. Thank you, Mar. I am reporting to Twitter and to Facebook on what we're doing today. I know we're on track of it and we have some visitors. So I will be busy writing and tweeting. So if you see me, I'm not looking at the screen, I'm listening intently to broadcast this to all the people who are listening on social media. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pamela. Actually, would you mind sharing the digital communicators um, 
tag in our username, maybe hashtags that people can be following during the session? They can follow on uh, digital communicators on, at I don't know the name. Okay, digital communicators, one word, D I G T A L communicators. And it, I'm going to put that in the chat right now, and I will put it in the chat for the Facebook, the Facebook group as well. Thank you very much. If you have a Twitter account, you can retweet. I just posted some things in there. This is our Twitter account. And I'll put our Facebook account. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Pamela. We'll ensure that the work, the hard work you're doing, just, you know, is going to be worthy and people will be interacting with you. Okay, let's continue then. Finally, one more unique role of our Digital Communicators Club, open feedback. Today, we'll be guided by DTM Andrew Bennett, who has a favorite technology quote. Technology is best when it brings people together. For him, even greater than having access to so much information and data at our fingertips is the possibility to maintain a face-to-face -face contact with people all over the world. He thinks our use of all the fabulous technology on offer is kept healthy when we focus on the possibility for human interaction, connection. So please, let's put our hands together for DTM and Bennett. Digital communicators and our wonderful, wonderful guests who we're very pleased to see this evening. What is the shortest word in the English language containing the letters A, B, C, D, E, and F? Have you worked it out yet? It's feedback. I know you have to add a K on the end, or well, that was just the trick bit for the end of the quote, but there you are. The word is feedback. Now, I hope that you have your mobile phone with you or your tablet, or maybe you're just going to take down notes in the old fashioned way with pen and paper. I don't mind, but what I would love is when we get to the open feedback session a little later on, for you to share some of your commendations and recommendations for our three prepared speakers this evening. We have Deck, we have Azra, and we have Kavita, who are going to give prepared speeches this evening. I'll guide you through that moment when it comes. We're going to give them some feedback that's transformative this evening, that's really going to make a difference to their growth as speakers. Toastmaster Mark. Thank you very much, and I can't wait for the open feedback moment where everybody has you know, a word to say and share. And here we are for human connection to happen. It's time for the show to start with three stupendous and hopefully transformative speeches. Are you ready? So then let's get started. First, Toastmaster Dag Klaski is going to deliver a speech from Visionary Communication, level two, learning your style Introduction to Toastmasters Mentoring. As this man has no introduction, so he's not getting one then, let's simply welcome him who mentored me, Dek Klaski, Dek Klaski, who mentored me. Dek, you're... I know, you don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell. That's what's caused, called a pregnant pause. It gets people excited and wanting to hear every word I say. So you shouldn't interrupt the speaker. <laughs> Who mentioned me? The real answer is too many. 
everybody that I met who knew more than me or, you know, was good, fantastic, I saw something in them, I made them mentors, whether they liked it or not. The first one at school, Brother Deeney. Now, he was a real life prime of Miss Jean Brobody, Maggie Smith, if you saw the film. There were about six of us that were really prime. What would you call us? Learners, I suppose. We, we were devouring knowledge and we followed them around just like with Maggie Smith. He had the first one that I ever saw, even though he was a, a Christian brother, a very strange cultish sort of an order of men that taught, even though he was like that, he still had huge style. And you'll see through all the stuff I'll say, the style that hit me straight away. The next one was probably my piano teacher, Noel Curtin. Lovely man, again, style, style, style. And he taught me one marvelous thing that I've given to so many people. It's good in the music industry, good in the theater industry, in the speaking industry particularly. When you're learning something, do it three times without a single mistake. Only then do you know the piece. If you make a mistake coming towards the end of, say, the third time, you have to go right back to the start and do it three times again. That was one of the best things I ever learned. Take it a little bit further, we got very involved with an organization owned by Andrew might remember this name, Heyman Andrews. Broadcasting and Theatrical Productions in Dublin. And I sat beside that sound engineer who, everybody said he was a BBC trained sound engineer. And this was when Echo was just starting in recordings. Reverb wasn't heard of, but he had a reverb unit. It was a tube with a spring going down through it. I sat beside him and I learned absolutely everything. People who ran the organization brought in, you don't believe this, but this was Ireland, believe it or not, a makeup artist. And this was a radio broadcast company. And I was appearing on radio. I was 14 years of age doing a 26 week radio series. And they brought in a makeup expert to show me how to put makeup on for radio first real man that i came across that i said i think he could be my mentor was philip solomon you may know him he was a man who owned radio caroline what a lot of people don't know is that i owned he owned a third, I owned a third, and his brother Mervyn owned a third. And that's how my record got played so much on the radio. Philip Solomon, that man of style, taught me all about money. You never let anybody pay for anything in a restaurant. And I coined that great phrase when I was around Philip Solomon, it's only money. Next great man was Dick Rowe, style 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 a small man diminutive man famous for refusing the beatles at decca records became a great friend of mine he was quite tiny tubby known for walking around with no clothes on if he came to stay with you and people would say oh don't mind it's only dick he was the first man ever you look at that photograph closely to have stubble unheard of in those days and he also had a clippered hairstyle unbelievable in those days but that was dick but i'd like now to take you all on a journey to an enchanted palace an enchanted palace 
called the London Palladium. Up the steps, this is the greatest theater in the world. Everybody wants to play there. Chaplin played there, Laurel and Hardy played there, Sonata played there, Ella Fitzgerald, Bob Hope. Nowadays, Madonna, Robbie Williams. I'm taking you there. And I'm taking you inside. And I'm taking you down, down to the seats that I've got reserved for you. And they are in the approximate center of the theater. Fourth row, plush seats, gorgeous. You sit there, you're six meters away from the orchestra, urged on by the great, the wonderful Jack Parnell. On stage, there are three guys. Number one in the charts. This night we'll go down in history. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, fellow Toastmasters. Because with the largest audience ever at Sunday night at the London Palladium, there are three guys on stage singing their hearts out. You know them. You've seen them before. The little guy on the left. Supposedly the genius of the organization does all the arrangements. Steers the band. They take their applause. Standing ovation. Let's go up and follow that young man. Backstage into the number one dressing room. Tiny dressing room, believe it or not. He gets dressed into a limo, goes to San Martino's, the best restaurant in town. He wasn't into the groupy thing, the after stage parties, all that, the show parties. Thank you, thank you so much, Dick Klusky. We can't really wait to hear the last words, but unfortunately, as you know, in this class, we are very mindful of our time because time is precious here. So thank you for so much to share about your mentoring. Now let's continue with our second speaker. This time, our second speaker is Toastmaster Azra Bibi Muslim, and she's going to deliver a speech from effective coaching level two, learning your style, understanding your leadership style. Ashra tells us a healthy relationship with digital technology. How great would that have been? She's still struggling to do the same as she spends way too much time using digital technology. Learning new things is super exciting for her, but at the cost of health. So she hopes she can strike the best deal in the near future. We hope so, Ashra. So hopefully you get a better relationship, a healthier relationship with digital technology soon. Let's put our hands together then for Ashra Bibi. Are you a leader? Ashra Bibi, Ashra Bibi, are you a leader? Are you a leader? Are you a leader? How many times have you asked yourself this question? Now raise your hands if you've asked, never asked yourself this question. Hello Toastmasters, respected guest. I am in the team of Julian who raised his hand. I have asked myself this question a hundred of times or even more that I can't even recall the exact number. Whenever this topic of leadership would come on the table, I would simply say it's about leading others, simple and generic as it can be. I used to think that leaders, there are special people born with special qualities that I do not possess. 
But as time went by, I realized you and me, we are all leaders. But at school, at universities, or at work, or even at home. But the question is, what differentiates you and me? Well, I think the answer is in this particular project that I am doing today, understanding your leadership style. The style is what differentiates you and me. This project is a very beautiful one and I took the time to go through all the notes and explanations that it has on TI. Let me ask you another question. How many leadership styles does Toastmaster International makes reference to in this particular project? Does anyone know any figure? No, four is not correct. Five is not correct. Not six, not seven. We are near. Well, let me tell you, it's eight. We have eight leadership style in this particular project. What is my style? Let me give you a tip. I am currently doing a project with a team. We are four in the team where I am sharing information with respect to pathways, mentorship, easy speak, with the objective of having the members in turn training other members in the future. I have created a WhatsApp group where members collaborate together. A first meeting has been done already where the objectives has been set, the task has been assigned, and most importantly, I am encouraging people to be positive and supportive to each other. I might know something while another member might know something. In summary, my leadership style is about collaboration, guidance, and support. So does anyone have any idea out of the eight leadership style, what is my primary style? It's an eight letter word starting with the letter C. No, it starts with the letter C, it's not democratic. The style is coaching. Coaching is a mix of collaboration, support and guidance. How did I get this style? It's simply by answering certain questions in this project and it calculated automatically an assigned mark, highest mark to this style of mine. But another question that I'm going to set is, can we use the same style all throughout and in all situations? Definitely not. This is because the style that is applicable to a particular situation, a particular audience, might not be suitable for another situation and audience. For example, in my particular team, the members are fairly new and are yet to reach their full potential. What if tomorrow I have members like you, seasoned members in a team? Would the coaching style be effective? Well, I doubt so. I need to transform that style and flex it most probably an innovative style would be the solution. My point is one might have a primary style, but depending on situation, circumstances and audience, we might need to flex it. Irrespective of all these styles, for me, I believe in three things as a leader. Number one, integrity always be honest and true in the relationship, in the leadership. Number two, communication is key. Open lines of communication, a call, a message, an email, be ready to respond. 
and number three, lead by example. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, my question to you, are you a leader? Well, I think now the answer is clear and crystal. We are all leaders. Now let's try to become transformative leaders. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Wow, definitely transformative has been this speech, hasn't it? So I believe that we all have a leader in us. So let's, let's get transformative in that. <laughs> now, let's continue. Our third speaker today, Kavi Tadulai, she's going to give a speech from Effective Coaching Level 3, Increasing Knowledge, Creating Effective Visual Aids. She feels her relationship with tech is fairly healthy. Just listen. She doesn't spend more time than she has to at her PC. She uses a focus timekeeper. She works in blocks of 25 minutes and uses Pomodoro timer to take her breaks. Pomodoro timer, yes, take notes. I was even searching for it and I will be sharing that website that I'm really excited about, you know, to use very soon. And finally, she, what she does is that all sounds on her phones are always off. So she looks at messages intermittently during the day, but otherwise, you know, sounds, you know, can be distracting. So wow, so much to learn from you, Kavita. So with no further ado, let's welcome her with a big round of applause. Let's talk about sustainability, Kavita Dulai. Kavita Dulai, let's talk about sustainability. Thank you, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Let's talk sustainability. Before we launch into this topic, I'd really like to know where you are on the sustainability journey. So what we'll do is launch a poll. Just the point of the poll is to be totally honest with yourself. Doesn't matter about anybody else. So where are you on this sustainability journey? Do we have the results yet? Okay, so those results, 42% of us are sustainability champions. I'm hoping one day that we are all going to be sustainability champions. We've got a wonderful opportunity to talk about this subject. And the reason for it is what I'm planning to do is give you this presentation. I have tried to make it into five to seven minutes, give you the presentation as it stands and give you the script. And please feel free to adapt it and to share it within our Toastmasters network, because we have got an amazing network of speakers across the world. We all belong to different clubs. So this is a gift, if you like. So please share it. So sustainability in its simplest, simplest definition is sustainability is that humans must interact with the environment in a way that it ensures there will be enough resources left for future generations. Now, sustainability is a huge topic and it's a complex topic, really, really easy to get overwhelmed with it. But if you break it down into simplest, simplest pieces, what it is, is about leaving enough for future generations. That's all it is. And at this moment in time, we are not living a sustainable um, life. And the reason is, for it, there are various reasons we can look into it. But the biggest reason is, um, is we have got a rise in global temperatures. So if I can make this slide bigger for you, warming of the earth is projected to be between 4.1 and 4.8 
degrees by the end of this century. Now that may not feel like a lot to you, but another way to look at it is, if we went down by minus 4.1 to 4.8 degrees, we would actually be in an ice age. So what that means is, we are very, very susceptible to small degrees and changes. So there are current policies in place, global policies, across the world, you know, every country is involved. We are trying to keep temperatures down to, uh, to somewhere between, two, say 2.5 degrees, between 2.5 and three degrees. We are trying to sort of stall this whole global, if I can call it a pandemic, this increase in temperature. So remember what I said, if I could break it down into simplest, simplest pieces, the simplest piece is that we are pumping far, far, far too much global, um, as far, far too much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And we, there are various reasons for this carbon dioxide. It doesn't matter what the reasons are. We need to understand these reasons for ourselves. But what this is forming is like a blanket across the earth and the earth just cannot cool off. So as President Obama said, we are the first generation to feel the effects of climate change. And we are also the last generation who can do something about it. So what that means is don't leave it to the young. We need to all act now. That's all of us. We all can do something. It is said that more than 80% 80 of the natural disasters are down to climate related change. And some of this we, ha we are seeing. We are seeing flash floods, for example, in Germany. It happened not so long ago. And we are seeing droughts, droughts that last far too long. And we've got bushfires that are going on. Again, this is a natural phenomenon, but it's lasting far too long. And the result of this eventually will be that people will not be able to live in coastal regions or regions that are affected and there will be a mass migration. But however, there is good news. I don't want it to be all doom and gloom because if it was all doom and gloom, I would not be giving this talk. The good news is that everybody cares. This was a survey done by the United Nations published in January, 2021, surveyed 1.2 million across 50 different countries. And what, what it showed was that everybody cares in every age group. And we have done so much in the past. There are so many problems we've resolved. If we think about history and the things we've done, but even climate problems were resolved. For example, here is the, the, um, the hole in the ozone layer. In 1979, it appeared and it got bigger and it got bigger and bigger and then we put policies in place and by 2005 it was getting smaller and smaller and as individuals we can actually do quite a lot so these are some of the things I have been doing so I want to share this with you the first one is the first picture you see is that bubble wrap have you ever had packaging that receive you get a packet with lots and lots of bubble wrap but why why are people putting so much bubble wrap and here in the UK, some of the local councils can't even recycle this bubble wrap. And this came from my company. And 20 of these boxes were sent to different locations throughout the UK, I imagine with the same amount of bubble wrap. So what I did was I sent an email to the sustainability group and I also sent it to the distribution center. I'm still waiting to hear. It didn't feel comfortable, but I think it's really important to speak up when you see these small things. Well, not small, it's actually quite big. And the other thing I've done is I have changed from normal shampoo bottles to shampoo cubes. So as you know, a plastic, a normal shampoo comes in a plastic bottle and plastic bottles can take hundreds of years to degrade. And I've also changed our hand soap uh, um, back to cubed soap. And I've also ordered an electric car. But most importantly, is I've actually started buying secondhand clothing too. Wow, Kavita, thank you very much for sharing so much. 
again, unfortunately, we are missing the end, but we got some ideas and some tips that we can take to be more sustainable, right? Okay, let's see. Please, Toastmaster Haiti, could you inform us about the times for the three speeches? Time is precious for all of us, whether we're Toastmasters or not. My report will highlight some issues, but not as a stick, but as a helpful piece of feedback. So the grammarian took 50 seconds. The live reporter took 23 seconds. Open feedback, one minute and nine. And then we get to the speakers. The speakers, they, Dick Klusky, he did run to seven minutes 30 when muted and felt like he wasn't yet ready to wrap up. Azra, congratulations, you stuck to six minutes 26. Kavita, a little more work to do, but you, I think you are getting there. I seen you do it last time and it was already much more engaging and shorter. So keep working on it. Well done, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Heidi, for those times in that report. And now, after enjoying these three wonderful speeches, let me share, you know, one and the first tip for being digital, for embracing digital well-being, let's say. Yeah, we have been paying so much close attention to those speeches that maybe it's time to stand up. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to stand up and stretch a little bit. We need to stretch our body, move our legs, shake your arms. If your dog is around, hug, hug him or whoever, you know, is around you, just move a little bit, okay? And as we, as, as we know, time is precious, so I would continue, you know, I would love to continue stretching up for a little bit longer, but I believe we need to move on to our next section. And that's our fantastic transformative section, table topics. Let's continue with the show because the show must go on. And that's something that our DTM Julian Sarah said and knows very well. He's going to conduct this section. He, you know, when I asked him about his relationship with digital technology, he wondered, do I have a healthy relationship with it? And he replied, yes, unless he goes to bed with it. So this is why he keeps the technology away from his bedside. So that's a great tip. I'm going to take it. Now, now come, 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 come. It's a big it's round, round of applause. applause. Julian, Julian Sarah, Sarah. Sarah. the floor is yours. Is table topics time. I'm your topics masters for today, and I recommend you to put the speaker's view because on this screen, on this screen, you will see pictures popping up. Six pictures. I will change every 20 seconds. Your challenge, your challenge is to tell me a story. What is going there? Please do not. Do not describe the picture. We can all see what is on the picture. Try to imagine a story. But that's not all. After the speaker speaks, we will hear a name. That person will hear this song. And he or she will have to give one minute evaluation. Please make sure that you provide something useful, something that you like, and something that that person could have done better. Are we ready? Let's go. First question goes for Ken. Ken, you are there? Yes. Unmute yourself, go.
beauty personified in the distance between the glow of green and the shimmery waters as I walk on to destiny. It's a bit scary, the uncertainty, but yet beauty in another form. The shades of white as they caress the green leaves of the beautiful trees. This feels like imagination or is it a dream? Uncertainty, but hope in the horizon, life in the crystals of water on the leaves as they caress them. Beauty is all I see. Topics master. More leaves. <laughs> Okay, Kim, there are six pictures. Remember, six pictures. Six. Five, six pictures. Anyway, that's fine. Or Toastmasters, distinguished Toastmasters, Brian Dot, are you there? Would you mind giving a one minute evaluation to Ken? Uh, let me play the shotgun. Yes, yes Ken. Ken. I found uh, you speak very clearly, and I wasn't, uh, I could only see the one picture coming on and, and back on, it was the same picture. So I don't know whether you saw more than one picture or not, but you speak clearly and confidently, and I would, I would have to replay the recording in order to find out if I understood exactly what your answers were, that I have seen those northern lights in northern Manitoba, so I can identify with that. Back to you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Brian Dodd. Next question goes to Pilar. Pilar, are you ready? Tell me. What is going on on these pictures? Just ago, I was traveling in a very peculiar place, really far from my house. And um, I was traveling with a couple of friends we were arriving to a very strange city and suddenly we saw something that catches my attention on, on the city. It was completely dark, but uh, there were some images, kind of um, luminic panels, uh, but it was strange, but it was a very old ancient city and these uh, panels were not uh, really related to the place in which we were at this time. And suddenly some, we perceived someone else was uh, stepping uh, be behind us because uh, we, we, I, have the, I have the impression, the feeling that uh, something uh, strange was uh, going to happen. And suddenly um, we saw a signal inviting us to enter in a place. Of course, we didn't know this place, but we we felt really scared and we decided to, to come in this place. And I, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> Something totally different appeared in front of us. There was uh, like a traveling in the, in the time, through the time, and we, we were in a completely different place, a very beautiful city, very modern city, well, different mediums of transport, different places to see. We were looking at uh, each us, asking what was happening because we didn't understand uh, anything. Uh, we couldn't understand what was happening 
Back to you, Mr. <laughs> Table Topics. Fantastic, fantastic. That was a difficult one. Mafasur, are you there? Mafasur, are you there? You are not there. Then, Janis, would you like to give one minute evaluation to Pilar? Unmute yourself, Janis. Yes, thank you for uh, uh, inviting me here. Well, uh, Pilar, I really enjoyed the, how you tried, although English is not your native language, how you, you, you tried to describe every picture, even the most difficult ones. Your speech had a flow and you tried to get us and suck us into your story, which is very, well, I really enjoy that. And I was really looking forward to seeing how this story would end up. And I saw that you tried to incorporate different, different elements like the voice tonality and maybe some horror. And I really enjoyed your speech and thank you very much for giving me uh, the chance and the option to uh, evaluate you. Back to Back you. To you. Fantastic, Gianni. It's a difficult one. I know, I know. Next one goes to... Hola, hola. Are you there? Yes, I'm there. Live and there. Fantastic. So this is for you. Hey. Wow. And the glow of the light. You can see the beauty of the moon, even when it is total darkness of the whole universe. And me having my realization of dreams and hope for better days ahead, a sustainability to a great. And now it's about to be morning and I'm just still in thought, prayers to my creator, hoping for a better day of unity for the world, hoping for we all to be able to live healthy without COVID restricting our live activities. And now I need to pen my thoughts into a book and having a lovely dark coffee, rewinding myself back to the reality of life. And in the mood of the coffee, I have to start writing my different dreams and aim, and definitely a speech for my Toastmasters club. But everywhere still seems so dark and scary, making me think, is it the same world we are all in? Is it total darkness in the old part of the world? Or is it just in Manchester, the, we've been hacked by the cyber crime and no source of electricity around. But go up and never stop. Those were the words I've written in my diary while having that coffee. And I'm going to say to myself, never give up in the reality of your dreams. Never stop. Keep believing and keep going high. And the dreams are going to be higher and there. And as you can see, when you have dreams, you take the boat step, drive around, even if it has to be driving to the Iceland, where there's life and hope for better days. And I have said to myself, to my little queen angel, smiling and sleeping, saying there are better days ahead. We just have to be positive. Keep dreaming and keep hoping for the best days ahead. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Hola. And our evaluator this time is Colette. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Topics Master. Hola, you absolutely nailed that. And I just love the way you have your one of your two infant babies on your shoulder giving us that speech. It had everything to draw us in. And you know what? You just the way you wound your story around your theme, you just kept jumping from one thing to the other and bringing it back to you, about you and what we need to do. I just absolutely loved it. And you're so calm about it and the baby on your shoulder. If I have one recommendation, I would be saying to you, maybe laugh. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Fantastic, Colette, and we go with the last one. 
Last one goes to Iju. Are you there, Iju? Yes. This, yes, this is for you. I was in Bologna last year and Bologna in winter, it's, you know, it's so cold and you can't see anything. It's so cloudy. And I was just walking around thinking about my life in Italy. And I was like, yeah, let's just stop and grab a coffee. And I stop in this small little coffee. And I texted him just, you know, to invite 